Greetings, this is Spec Ops 56 and my cameraman John and we're back out in the garden to do garden update number two. Uh, unfortunately this is not a good news garden update. I am once again under attack and this time I'm under attack from two different directions and two different enemies. Uh, the this garden I, I think I've said it from the beginning this garden has always been a learning experience for me and in the last three years counting this year so far every year I've been under attack and generally I get under attack by something new every year so I learn something new every year so I don't consider it a total negative the more I learn the less problems I'll have later so that being said uh, I'm going to go and show you each of the two problems I had separately and I'll explain what they are and then I will show you what I have done and what I am going to do about them. So um, let's head over to the Eastern Front. Welcome to the Eastern Front of my war zone, otherwise known as my garden. Now this first problem started on, this is Thursday, and it started a week ago Thursday. And what it was is, the first attack is from my old nemesis, the tomato hornworm, otherwise known as the little green monsters, or the little green bastards, as I call them. They hit these, this tomato plant here, there was one on this plant, I came out, found one on this plant. You can see the damage that they do. They just eat these things up until you have almost no foliage left. And uh, luckily I caught these early enough that I think these plants will survive. But you can see the damage here. Uh, I'll have to admit that I was surprised because the last, last year, then the first year when I, when I got hit by the hornworms before, I didn't get hit until, until later in the season, uh, around July, and so I wasn't really expecting them, and I hadn't been looking as closely for them as I should have. I'll know better next time. They hit this, this tomato plant, and they, there was one on this tomato plant. Uh, I got him early enough that he didn't do too much damage, but he did do some, as you can see here. Uh, now some of this uh, that you see how it's a lot of these branches have been cut off that is uh, related to the second attack the second enemy which I'll be going over shortly uh, but first I wanted to uh, show you uh, the kind of damage you need to look for when you've got tomato hornworm now, tomato hornworms are really hard to spot on the plants. They're green, they got white stripes, they really blend in, and you really have to look close for them. And you, once, they, once they show up, you've got to look for them every day. I look, I look every morning and I look every evening, okay? Because uh, they tend to show up at, uh, overnight. And uh, they can decimate your tomato plant you know, in one day. Uh, now, it just so happened that that Thursday uh, when I caught them, uh, I killed them, and unfortunately, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, I had a table at the local gun show, and I just didn't have time to spend much time out here. So, uh, I did uh, make up a a uh, tonic to spray on them and I'll go into the details of that later and how well that worked. So uh, that's the tomato hornworm damage over here on the eastern front. Now I'll move over to the western front and I'll show you the enemy that I'm currently battling. 
Okay, welcome to the western front of the battlefield known as my container garden. The current enemy that I am battling now is this right here. <clears throat> Take a good close look at that. Okay. See how that looks? This is called Septoria Leaf Spot. And what this is, is a fungal disease. Come over to this other one. You can see some more of it. Okay, you see what the leaves start getting brown, get brown spots, get, get little holes in them, they get black spots, they get yellowed, and, and they start to sh shrivel. This is a fungal disease. This particular one is called Septoria uh, leaf spot. Alright, now, these two plants were the last plants I bought, and I got them from Walmart. And they had to have had the fungal disease, the spores on them when I got them. Because this is where it started, and these are where it's the worst. So, I will not be buying plants from Walmart anymore. You know, that's my decision. Your mileage may vary. Now, uh, this has spread some uh, to my other tomato plants. And that's why you see that they look like this now with so much of the limbs and foliage cut off. Because here's what you have to do here's what you have to do in order to battle the leaf spot. Uh, because, it's a, because it's a fungus, the spores are on the plant. They're, they're in, in the ground. What you have to do is first you have to remove all of the obviously infected limbs and foliage. Okay, uh, I haven't yet. I'm going to do that momentarily because I wanted to leave it there so that uh, you could see what it is. But you're going to want to remove all this foliage. Now, don't put it in your compost pile. Don't just toss it on the ground because even after you cut it, the spores are still on it and they will drift in the wind. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you take all the all the cuttings and either burn them or what I did is I put them all in a Ziploc bag and put them in my garbage. So you want to get rid of them. You also, after you've messed with them, uh, before you go messing with your other plants, you want to wash your hands, wash whatever tools you may have used so you don't spread it. Now, the, uh, now I, I want you to understand I'm no expert in this. And this is what I have learned since I first noticed and identified this, okay? This is my first time fighting a fungal disease, the septoria leaf spot. So I'm just telling you what I have recently learned. We'll see how it all works out in the next update. Now, what you can do if the plant has not been affected too much, if you catch it early, once you have removed all of the the affected branches then you want to make up a mixture of baking soda and water and you spray that on the plant you want to spray the tops of the leaves the bottom of the leaves you want to you want to drench it okay that will not kill the spores it will not kill the fungus but what it will do it creates an environment on the plant that inhibits the spread and growth of the fungus, of the spores. So you spray it on there. You also want to spray it on your unaffected plants as a preventative. And, um, okay, uh, now I'm going to show you some of the things that I got, go in more detail as to uh, what I am doing and have done to fight these pests um, just a moment.
Okay, welcome to Damage Control Central here. Your first line of defense against both pests, the fungal disease and the green monsters, is this. Okay. I have found that there are a lot of different ways that you can deal with the green worms, the, the tomato horn worms. You, know, you can just pluck them off and uh, drop them in a bucket of soapy water or drop them on the ground and you know stomp on them or now I found for me the easiest way to deal with them when I find them is just take these and cut them right in half they fall off fall on the ground and the birds get a treat you know, so and this is also your first line of defense with the fungal disease because you're going to take these and you're going to cut off all those affected branches. Okay, now after that. Now I'll, I'll talk about uh, how I dealt with the hornworms first because that was the first, first thing I, a pest I came across. Uh, I had a problem because I was going to be away from the house most of the day all weekend long uh, and didn't have it, wasn't going to be able to check on them or, or do anything else So, I, uh, because I was at, at the gun show. So uh, what I did as a preventative to try to keep them from coming back after I, after I had chopped chopped the uh, two that I found, I made up a, uh, you took my three gallon sprayer and I made up a spray of neem oil, uh, insecticidal soap, and dish soap, all mixed together in water. In this case, I didn't I didn't uh, specifically measure the amounts. I just took one of those little you know protein scoop size coops and put in a put in a scoop full of each one in here, mixed it up, and I sprayed all of my tomato plants really well uh, first thing in the evening in the evening before before I went to bed and I sprayed them first thing in the morning before I left. And so far the green worms have not made a reappearance. So at least for, for now, that seems to have run them off. It seems to put them in retreat, which is just fine with me. I'm going to keep a close eye out, and what I will probably do is, because I sprayed them every day over the weekend, what I will do now is I will use that same spray, but I'll only spray them about once a week. And hopefully that will keep them from coming back. Now that takes care of the tomato hornworm. Now the other pest, the, the septoria leaf spot, is a little more complicated to deal with. So as I said, first you want to remove all of the affected foliage. Then what I did is I made up a sprayer of the water and baking soda. Now the water and baking soda is the original formula that I found uh, that uh, it is used for fungal diseases. I added to it some of the uh, antiseptic mouthwash because it's an antiseptic um, and this is just a theory of mine. I think that the antiseptic would probably help give it a little bit more killing power against the spores that are remaining. At least that's my theory and I'm going with it. So uh, I would, uh, I took this and for the last few days I've been treating the uh, tomato plants with this. My hope was on, on the ones that were affected the most, my hope was that I could slow them down enough that I could get this, this serenade. This has been recommended as one of the products that does a really good job of killing the fungal spores. 
problem is around here nobody carries it in the stores not Home Depot not Lowe's nobody carries it so I ended up having to order it from Amazon.com good old Amazon and uh, while I was waiting that's why I was I was spraying it with this baking soda mouthwash combination to try to slow down its progression until I could get the stuff to kill it. Today I will be mixing this stuff up into the sprayer and I will be spraying it and hopefully I will be killing it. Um, now, one other thing. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to go into you know how much you mix and how often you spray it. You just need to get it and read the directions because I've never used it before so this is a learning experience for me. One last thing, because you are going to be cutting off so much of the foliage from your tomato plants, it's a good idea to take some fish fertilizer or some other, some other fertilizer that's high in nitrogen and give it a good feeding of nitrogen in order to help give it a boost so it can start regrowing the foliage uh, and so that's what I did I just took took some uh, fish fertilizer mixed it in with a bucket of water and just gave it a feed for, for all of my uh, all of my tomato plants I gave it a feed so, now that's uh, that takes care of all the bad stuff going on in my garden and I will be uh, like I say I'll be updating you on my success in battling these program prolific problems one last thing I want to do is kind of show you some of the good stuff in my garden well start with I'm getting some strawberries on my strawberry plant all right and uh, also so far I have gotten two two full-size cucumbers off of my cucumber plant over here one of them I already ate and it was good the other one's sitting in the refrigerator and I'll be eating it uh, soon but my uh, cucumber plant here has really taken off right now it's starting to look a little wilty because it's getting hot out uh, when I'm done with the uh, video here, I'll be watering it and taking care of the plants. Now, um, even though they've been damaged, you can see my tomato plants are doing their best to reproduce themselves. <laughs> Hopefully they will continue. Now, these are the plants that I gave that booster tonic to, uh, hoping that I could uh, you know help it uh, get started growing better seems to be working to an extent on some of them this one while not really getting a whole lot taller it is getting more foliage so hopefully this will continue to grow this one here I don't know <laughs> I don't think this one's gonna make it my um, Caroline raspberry plant doesn't seem to be uh, getting any better or any worse. We'll have to wait and see what happens. And over here we also have this one which also looks like it may not make it. Here is this cucumber plant that I started from seed a little too late. As you can see it is growing taller. It's even starting to produce. Um, it's not a lot taller, but the booster did help it grow a little taller. But as you can see, it's not growing any stronger. The stem is still as spindly as it can be. So I don't know how well that one's going to work out. Uh, otherwise, everything seems to be coming along. My uh, cantaloupe plants have really busted out. Um, and they're probably going to take over the rest of the garden <laughs> if I don't watch it. Uh, you now the basil's growing. My sweet potato plants, those have uh, those have taken off pretty good. 
So uh, overall, I'm I'm fairly pleased. As you can see, even though they're not getting very big, very tall, my pepper plants are already starting to produce. This one particularly. I'm just waiting for those to turn red, get ripe, so then I'll pick them. Uh, and that uh, pretty much takes care of this garden update. I uh, hope that you found it uh, useful. And um, I appreciate you following along with me with my trials and tribulations in the world of gardening. Uh, and I will share all my my successes and failures with you so that hopefully you'll learn by my mistakes and you won't make the same ones. So until then, until the next time, this is SpecOps56 and my faithful Indian companion and cameraman John Toe saying happy gardening. Well, it's big and terrible. It's more frightening than I ever thought possible.